Hello everybody, welcome to my channel. Uh, today we will see part 3, that's just about uh, linear dependencies, more specifically collinearity among the predictors. As all of you know that we are dealing with multiple linear regressions uh, and there is uh, a chance or there is a possibility to have collinearity among the, uh, among the predictors. Then this uh, should be, or this need to be, uh, carefully uh, verified. And uh, multicollinearity uh, can be verified using the variance inflation factor. And uh, in order to check the linear dependency, or in order to check whether the uh, collinearity or multicollinearity is present in our data, we have to use the variance inflation factor dot CCA function. Then, uh, as a rule of uh, as a rule of thumb. If the square root of variance inflation factor greater than two, so there is a multicollinearity, and even the multicollinearity is considered as what as uh, high. So indirectly, um, this uh, indicates that some of uh, uh, predictors or some of the explanatory variables are uh, redundant. So um, this better to uh, reduce the explanatory. Uh, variables or the uh, predictors. Then in order to just to reduce uh, the predictors or in order to select the best explanatory uh, variables from the given uh, data, we have to use what the forward selection using the uh, forward dot SEL uh, function that helps us to select the best explanatory variable uh, to uh, our analysis. Then, in order to perform that one, you have to you have to load the pack for the pack for package, and you have to follow this syntax in order, in order to load it. So I already have uh, the package, so no need to run this packet. Just uh, simply uh, run uh, or just simply submitting these things. And uh, let me uh, add you uh, two tips. The first one is if you want to uh, prevent problem with uh, with inflation of type one error. So you have to compute the global model. That means you have to use all the uh, environment, all the uh, the predictors or all the variables that you have what in your uh, data, and then calculate the p value. And if you found if you found the model is significant, yeah, just perform the forward. Uh, selection and the second one is uh, if you want to prevent adding too many uh, predictors or too many explanatory variables so you have to compute the uh, global adjusted r square and you can use this uh, adjusted r square value as second as second uh, uh, stoppage uh, criteria then uh, let's uh, use the two uh, concepts that means in order to prevent the type the inflation of type one either we will consider all the variables that we have in our data that means uh, our data is uh, environment so we will use all the variables so this is the previous model then uh, again the second one is if you want to just remove adding too many um, uh, predictors or too many explanatory variables you have to just uh, use a global adjusted r square and it's not just uh, like that of r square so uh, type this and submit to r studio it's simple is r square adjusted value from what from the uh, this model then attach uh, with a dollar sign again uh, getting the adjusted R uh, square value. If you remember, in the part two of our tutorial, it's around what 0 0.56, yeah. So, so it's the same. Then, in order to uh, select the best explanatory variables in our uh, data, so you have to use the forward uh, selection uh, forward dot cell. Function, then you have to use SP Hellinger. This is uh, the data that transformed with ecologically motivated transformation method. Among that one is the Hellinger method, which is uh, suited for ecological data. Then it's already the Y matrix, and our X uh, matrix is environment. And you can refer the previous tutorial regarding to this. 
then adjusted r squared threshold level is you have to what you, you, as, as i mentioned before you have to use 0 0.56 value as what as a stoppage value so uh, i already said in this way and again you can set your alpha level and the number of permutation in this way so by this way you can set your forward selection it's easy use the function of forward selection then this is the y matrix this is a x matrix and the two things that are added to is here. here is what the, tr the threshold level is what using the uh, global adjusted uh, r square value or 0 0.56 then alpha level 0 0.01 then the number of uh, permutation is 999 so type this and submit to our studio then uh, let's see the forward selection result so accordingly, uh, out of a number of, uh, uh, if you remember in the previous tutorial, there are around 11 predictors or 11 explanatory variables. Out of that, three are uh, selected, the, the UZ, the D, and the ZOM1. So we will again create another redundancy analysis using the three or the selected variable on the base of our selection. So let's say uh, redundancy analysis two or my underscore RDA two, then RDA is a function that helps us to compute redundancy analysis in our software. It is, uh, it's obvious the, the Y matrix then followed by what the three predictors only that means this one this one and this one this is came from where on the base of forward selection uh, result so the forward the end, the end result of forward selection is used at the end the om and you have to indicate your data name in this manner then uh, let's see the adjusted value using of all uh, the uh, explanatory values that we have so it's obvious you are expecting 0 0.56 then again let's see the adjusted r square value by including the three explanatory variables that means a uz d and z o m value so is r, uh, r square adjusted then the difference is what here is the model 2 uh, model 2 is uh, composed of only three explanatory variables while in the case of model 1 is composed of what 11 explanatory uh, variables then let's see their difference uh, among the adjusted r square value yeah uh, with 11 explanatory variables is around 0 0.56 Again, with three explanatory uh, variables, uh, 0.51. So this indicates more or less they are what? Uh, similar, more or less they are similar. And even let's check the multicollinearity. As I mentioned before, multicollinearity is, uh, can be performed uh, for the readiness analysis using the variance inflation factor dot CCA function. Then for 11 explanatory uh, variables or before uh, variable selection it is obvious for example here it is 10 uh, uh, if the value as a rule of thumb if the value is greater than the square root of uh, variance inflation factor that means the square root of 2 uh, so there is uh, uh, it can be considered that what is it, it can be considered as high multicollinearity so on the basis of this all uh, all except z o h uh, except rn uh, and except uh, temp all are what greater than two and there is a presence of uh, multicollinearity or there is a problem of multicollinearity but let's see with model two similar uh, code a square root of variance inflation factor but the, the, the difference is what here is you have to use uh, two instead of the, my underscore rda then let's see the variance uh, inflation factor So as you can see here, uh, there is 1.16, 1.99, 1.86. Even if, if you if you see, for example, here is zoom, uh, ZOM is 4.2, but now is 1.86. Again, D is 3.6, and now is 1.99. Again, UZ is 10.19, significantly re reduced to 1.16. So with the three explanatory variable, even the multicollinearity problem is solved.
Then uh, let's uh, go for the test significance. As I mentioned before, uh, most of the time ecological data are not normally distributed and uh, using of uh, the parametric test is not advisable. So it's non-parametric and you have to use three uh, tests. The first one is the global RDA significance. The second one is uh, axis. Uh, you have to check the axis significance. And the third one is uh, terms significance. That means explanatory variables. So the difference between the, the previous tutorial and this one is you have to use the selected uh, after variable selection. And our model here is my underscore RDA2 is composed from uh, three, uh, as you can see here, from three explanatory variables. Then uh, the first one is to check the global RDA significance. So you have to use ANOVA.CCA and just simply the module name. Then you will get uh, this result. Still, it is uh, significant. And again, if you want to check the axis, uh, so we are expecting uh, two or three uh, axes and uh, we may not uh, expect like the previous one around 11 or something. So type this and submit to our studio. Then you have to add bicycle so axis. So you are telling to R2U uh, for uh, axis uh, whether it is significant or not. So type this and submit to our studio. Then again, all the three axes are statistically significant. And lastly, the terms means among the response, among the explanatory variables, whether it is significant or not. So uh, again, write by the colors to terms and then submit to our studio. Then all the three uh, selected explanatory variables are uh, statistically uh, significant. So by this way, you can check the multicollinearity and also you can perform the forward selection uh, uh, for redundancy analysis. So this is all about uh, redundancy analysis uh, using our software. And in part four, I will come with a uh, partial redundancy analysis using our software. Until then, have a nice time.